leave the floor wet? All right, enjoy your rotten wood. First time posting here because I just remembered this incident. Back in the early 90s my mother, 40 female, worked as a cleaner for a couple of places and took me, 13 male, with her to help. One place we worked for was the only real estate place in town. We cleaned up before the people who worked there got in. When I started there it was small and somewhat dirty. Old smelly cubicle partitions in faded brown, off-color walls, ingrained dirt in the linoleum. We cleaned and I literally couldn't tell the difference after we were done, except the mirror in the washroom did not have any spots on it and the floor was wet from the fresh mopping. Then the town started becoming a cottage town and it is decided that they will move to a nicer place. Cottagers might find the griminess a little off-putting. The new place had a bit more space, brand new blue cubicle partitions, newly painted walls that still smelled the first day I cleaned in there, and a cheap hardwood panel floor. That floor was a bit of a problem. See, before, when we mopped, we would just leave the water to dry on the linoleum. We could do that because we got there at tilde 630 hours and they opened at 730 hours. The place was small enough that it was mopped by around 700 hours before we left and would be mostly dry by the time people arrived. If we did the same thing for this cheap wood floor my mother was worried we would have water seep into the cracks between the wood panels and rot them. So a new method for mopping was devised. First I dunk the mop, then ring the mop lightly, mop up, ring the mop again but fully this time, and then mop up as much of the excess water as possible. This new method visibly got a lot more water off the floor. By the time we left some of the earlier mopped areas would look mostly dry. Good solution mom. Couple weeks into the new place my mother gets contacted by the manager and a new order came in that we were not to dry the floor. I asked if she explained why we dried it. She had. I found this order a bit baffling at the time and it only occurred to me today the reason slash why slash he ordered this. The manager got in earlier than everyone else at about 715 hours, so I saw him a few rare times when we ran late. The old floor would have still been visibly wet in the old place when he got in. The new floor was now dry when he got in. Ipso facto we must have decided to skip mopping to leave early. Even though I didn't understand at the time that he thought we weren't doing our job I, of course, found this new order stupid. I thought he wants the floors wet when he gets in? Fine. Cue malicious compliance. You see, I did the mopping while my mom cleaned the washroom because I was a young strapping lad and she was my mom so I did what she said. I now had a standing order from the boss to leave a wet floor and, by gum, it was gonna be sopping. From that day forth not only did I not dry the floor, I now didn't even wring the mop after dunking it. I dipped it in the water and just let water slop off of the mop as I pulled it directly out of the bucket. There was no way this was gonna dry before he got in. Probably not for an hour after he got in either. Two weeks after I started doing this, lo and behold, the wood paneling was already starting to separate at the seams. Dirt is accumulating between tiles. It proves impossible to remove. I was a bit shocked at the time at how fast that had happened. Four weeks into the new mopping routine the floor was rotting. Was my mother psychic or what? It was apparently slash very slash cheap fiberboard with a paper-thin plastic wood grain pattern on it. I would have guessed a laminate wood grain on top of semi-waterproof fiberboard if you'd asked me four weeks ago. The floor now had visible divots and lines where the plastic paper sank into the deteriorating wood underneath. This trapped dirt in them as well. How classy. The floor, not even two months after they had moved into the new place, was even worse than the old beat-up linoleum one. At this point I asked my mother if we should start drying the floor, and wouldn't you know it, she had already asked. The answer was no. Leave it wet. Baffling. We cleaned there for another month or so. I barely felt safe walking on the floor as it was a now tripping hazard with warped parts popping up. It was also disintegrating. Splinters of wood would pop off every time I swept. The floor now had the dubious distinction of being the worst floor I had seen in a place that wasn't dilapidated. TLDR, manager says to leave the floor wet after mopping, we do, and the floor rots, warps, and disintegrates. Second story. The manager tried throwing me under the bus, so I showed everyone her incompetence. 
I recently resigned from a toxic workplace as a data analyst at a startup. It was promising at the start, but not long after I noticed many red flags, including the fact that my manager had no data analysis or management experience before being promoted. How can you manage analysts without knowing basic Excel functions? I ignored those red flags and trusted her leadership because I liked the company's goals, little did I know this would be the worst decision ever. I did all the work for the team for the whole year I was there. When I ran the numbers for reporting and analysis of team performance, she always asked me to dumb it down so she can present it to high-level management. I thought everything was going well because I only got good feedback from her and the rest of the team. About a month ago, a coworker who I don't get along with made a complaint about me which was untrue. The manager believed it without investigating and all of a sudden I was placed on a pip. She spouted all types of lies to HR, and when I refuted those claims with written evidence, they doubled down and started gaslighting me. You're just too negative. I refused to sign and was threatened with termination, so I complied and started building a case against them. I knew she was doing the pip to terminate me as she looked for internal candidates to replace me in secret because she was dumb enough to set the meeting up beside me. Once I signed my contract for a new job, I did fuck all and started working from home. Before my resignation, she asked me to do some reporting for her so I ran the numbers and sent her the raw data, told her where the files were located, and that she can analyze the data and make the presentation herself. Since she's the data analyst manager she should know how to do it. She tried reporting me for that but ultimately backfired because they asked her if the work that I did was wrong, and was forced to admit she didn't know what she was looking at. Everything else in the team was questioned and I believe they are now being audited by an external investigator. Credibility destroyed. I'm now working for a manager who is competent and has clear goals for the team, but that was a hell of a ride. A small win against toxic management but a win is a win. Edit, PIP is a performance improvement plan. It is used by managers to address underperformance and start a documentation process. Usually used as a first step to fire someone or phase them out. 